Welcome to part 8 of our series, Secrets of Glessner House. Today, we are going to look at the electric gaslight ignition system, the high-tech way to turn gaslights on and off at the time Glessner House was built in 1887. During tours of the house, we like to show this brass panel located in the hallway outside of the Glessner's bedroom and ask guests if they know how it was used. Very few people correctly identify it as the central control panel for a then modern system that allowed gas lights in the 10 main rooms of the house to be turned on and off remotely from this one location. Before we look at how the system worked, let's learn a bit more about the gas light fixtures that were installed in the house. All of the fixtures were provided by the Boston-based firm of Shrev, Crump, and Lowe, one of the leading firms in the country that provided everything from light fixtures to jewelry and sterling silver to art objects. This is the top portion of the final invoice from the company, showing that they were paid $809.50 to provide all of the light fixtures in the Glessner's home. The detailed building specifications for the house contain only four sentences regarding the installation of the gas piping and fixtures throughout the building. Most notable, the specifications indicate that there were two separate gas meters as the house and coach house were piped separately. This information was contained within the much larger document containing the specifications for the plumbing of the house as it was common for the same company to install both systems. The identity of the firm that installed the gas lighting was unknown until recently, as they were a sub of the main contractor, Norcross Brothers, so were not identified by name in the surviving construction documentation. During work on Fanny's bedroom in 2019, the small fragment of a tag, shown at left, was found between the floor joists. Researching the address confirmed that it came from the firm of Edward Baggett, which was the largest plumbing and gas contractor in Chicago at the time. The technology behind an electric ignition system to power gas lights was first developed in the late 1850s, one of the first systems being installed to illuminate the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol. Many patents were filed continually improving the system, with the earliest documented use in a private residence occurring in 1869. By 1877, this article noted that the lamplighter, an iconic figure on the streets of London, was soon to be replaced by an electric ignition system that would turn on all of the gas lights simultaneously. Getting back to the system at Glessner House, here we see a detail of the main control panel, showing two of the ten sets of buttons. In this case, those connected to the dining room and parlor, denoted by the letters D and P above. The top button would turn on a single burner in each room by operating a type of electromagnet known as a solenoid that would open the gas valve and draw one contact against the other to create the spark. The lower button would operate a second solenoid that would close the gas valve to extinguish the burner. The electricity came from a wet cell battery, a common type of which is shown here. Since each battery only provided one and a half volts, four would be strung together to provide the six volts needed to operate the ignition system. Thin low voltage wires were run from the control panel through the walls to the gas fixture in each room. The Glessners did not have pull chains on their fixtures but this pendant burner shows the same mechanism used to light the fixture. As one of the chains is pulled, note how the lever moves toward the center, slowly opening the gas valve and pushing the thin wire. Just as the lever reaches the center point, the wire is released and snaps back into place, creating the necessary spark to light the fixture. Pulling the other chain closes the gas valve. These movements would have been initiated by an electrical charge in the Glessner's home. 
The system also allowed the single burner in each room, which would have been closest to the entrance door, to be controlled by a separate pair of buttons either outside the room or immediately inside the door. The plate was typically brass or nickel, and the buttons were often faced in mother-of-pearl, as seen here. In this view of George Glessner's bedroom, taken soon after the family moved in, you can see the double push-button switch that would have been used to turn on the gas light immediately above, to the right of his dresser mirror. When the house was electrified, virtually identical-looking push-button switches were used to operate the electric lights. Remember that this switch and the central control panel only operated one burner or fixture in each room. Once that burner was illuminated, a similar igniter was contained within each of the additional fixtures, operated by the thumb cock that you typically see on a gas fixture. Turning this moved the lever in the same way as we saw previously, thus eliminating the need for any matches to light the fixtures. This concludes our look at the electric gas light ignition system that was used in the Glessner house. As elaborate as it was, it was only used for five years until the Glessners converted the house to electricity in 1892. We hope you have enjoyed learning more about our latest secret of Glessner House. Tune in next time when another secret will be revealed.